The Radish clan, known as the Radishans, became the most talented theatrical troupe in the Western continent. They left their Radish village to wander the lands as a Shakespearean species that could entertain all other sentient plant life. They had an uncanny ability to morph themselves for the sake of tragedy or comedy. The Tomaton clan tended to be explosively enthusiastic about such powers. The freedom of the Radishans came to an end when the Carrot Empire swept the Western lands. While another species might have been wiped out, the Carotenoids found the Radishans abnormally entertaining. As such, they kept them as jesters for their own amusement. The great Shakespearean-esque playwrights among them soon created subliminal interpretive dance performances that secretly communicated to the Mycelium network in order to alert the rest of the planet of the carotenoid oppression. The carrots were no fools, however, as they had an informant that told them of the multilinguistic abilities of the Radishans. And so the once great theatrical society was imprisoned, only allowed to perform under certain restrictions. Yet, the wise ones grew old and plotted other clever ways to find freedom. The Artichoke Empire was once the strongest in the Western lands during the Second Age. After their Great Reformation, their once glorious kingdom became a humble land of villagers and farmers. Their old mindset of conquest was over. Yet, their taste for glory never subsided. They satisfied it through the pursuit of legendary cabbage whales. Only the greatest of the Cenarians had what it took to face the Leviathan. Such mythical feats gave them pride, until one day the Carrot Empire arrived. They were completely outnumbered and unprepared. Any last shred of their dignity was taken from them, as their leftover kings were overthrown. The greatest whale hunter, known as Cetactus, watched from the sea, filled with rage and loss. He was too far away to do anything in time. Cenarian legends say he sailed away, as he was never again seen on those shores. The Cenarians were thrust into subservience. However, they were resilient and clever. They waited until the bulk of the Carrot Army had left before they talked their way into acquiring scientific texts from the Carotenoids' now blossoming renaissance. They were afraid of what the Carotenoids wanted to achieve. So there was only one option they saw left. They had to build a time machine. They hoped they could restore their former glory and stop the carrots before they took over. They were close to piecing together the ancient formula when suddenly the carotenoids discovered the unthinkable. The ginger root wizard studied with the first Broccolarian priestess of legend, Verdea herself, in order to learn the process of rooting oneself into the ground, gaining trance states that allowed them entrance into the mycelium realms. While the Broccolarians generally maintained contact with the planetary mycelium web, the wizards known as Zingibas felt compelled to go deeper into the roots of the mycelium mind. One by one, Zingibas accessed the interplanetary and eventually the interdimensional mind. Most of them, upon waking up to their Lotosian forms, never came back to planetary consciousness. By the fourth age, there was only one left who chose to remain on the planet. His name was Helix. His many thousand-year-long mycelium travels took him from shadows and light and into contact with the Dragonfruit clan, known as Pitayans, from another planet. The Pitayan group mind, Hylosirius, told him he must remain an emissary of the Alliance of the Many Worlds and to guard the great mycelium portal on his planet until the end of time, for if it was discovered by the wrong hands, the fabric of the galaxy itself could be endangered. And so, Hylosirius reshaped its consciousness with the help of the mycelium and budding dragon fruit in a latent evolutionary state. Hylosirius was reborn, becoming the only Pitayan on the planet to help Helix. Together, they flew to the weather-protected volcanic island that contained the grand mycelium portal. The Broccoli Empire was loved by all sentient plant life and only met their devastating end due to the Carrot Empire. Typical interplanetary mycelium propaganda, thought the Carrot King, until he realized the power of making his own film studio, where he could paint the Carrot Army as heroic as he wanted. The first attempts at creating carotenoid writers could only go so far, before he realized he needed to recruit the Radish clan's impeccable playwright abilities. With the help of their artistic prowess, he grew a film army out of their soil. Soon enough, a number of auteur carotenoid filmmakers arose. The cinematic form took off, 
as instant classics shaped themselves, and carotenoids were seen from the light of both good and evil. The carrot films became intergalactic mycelium vision hits, once the legendary Gravitational Wave Rider series hit the root network. The surreal romance epic about the forbidden love between the carrot and beetroot soldiers finally gained them prestige, as it won a sapling award. While the Carrot King Radix was pleased that the actual history of the Carrot Empire might be mysterious to other planets in the future, the Radishans hoped hidden messages of truth would reach an audience across the worlds connected to the quantum mycelium network. As it turned out, someone was tuning in who would never forget what the carotenoids did to the broccolarians, 